Sorry, 41. 41, 41, 41, 41. Uh, verse 14. Okay. Hold on to your hats because it's going to be a wild ride. Because oh, we got a lot to cover. Okay. Genesis? <clears throat> 41? Where do all these things come from? Is it on? Oh, or, have you got mine? Yeah, I've got yours. <laughs> Oh, I'm you telling you. Out? Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Oh, Here. I told you they all look the same. Well, at least I have well, a page right in yours. And okay, see, the... see, 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 name. I know, yeah. but I didn't get I ordered them. I ordered more than I didn't get names. That's funny. What did you say, 41? 41. Okay, so Genesis 41. I you correctly. Genesis 41, verse 14. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Okay. Um, so we've already... Uh, Joseph has been in Egypt for a long time. Okay? Mm -hmm. For a long time. And uh, I'm going to say he was quite a bit younger than his other brothers. Okay? He was quite a bit younger than his other brothers. And we'll see that as we continue on. But we're going to start verse 14. Then Pharaoh summoned Joseph. Remember, he had the dream. He's been in prison. He's been falsely accused. And then two of Pharaoh's, you know, dudes were in there, the baker and the, and the, the cupbearer. And uh, they had dreams. And Joseph interpreted the dreams. And one lost his life. And one was restored to serving the cup. And two years later, <laughs> and the cupbearer goes, <gasps> I am at fault. Oops. I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And he's saying this before Pharaoh. You don't tell no. no. You know, if you're sad, you don't have a sad face before the king, right? If mm -hmm. you're the cupbearer, you're always happy, even if you're not. <laughs> okay, otherwise. Yep. Okay, so that's where we're at. So this is after two years. Pharaoh had a dream, right? Mm -hmm. um, actually, let me... Let me back up to verse 1. At the end of two years, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing beside the Nile. Did I read that part yet? We didn't, I don't believe. Or did we? I thought we did. I don't remember. Did we read about that? We didn't? Okay, let's start at 1. At the end of two years, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing beside the Nile River. And there came up out of the river seven cows, sleek and fat. And they began feeding in swamp grass. And after them, there came up out of the river seven more cows, miserable looking and lean, and they stood by the other cows at the edge of the river. And then the miserable looking and lean cows ate up the seven sleek fat cows. Can you imagine such a thing? What a dream. And they still looked miserable and lean. Mm -hmm. Even though they ate these big beef, man, and they're still, yeah. But he went back to sleep again, and he dreamt a second time. This time, seven full ripe ears of grain grew up in a single stalk. And after them, seven ears, thin and blasted by the east wind, sprang up. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven full ripe ears. Isn't that odd? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen corn eat corn? Maybe it's barley. I don't know. Then Pharaoh woke up and realized that it had been a dream. Hmm. In the morning. He found himself so upset that he summoned all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one there could interpret them for him. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, Oh, today reminds me of something wherein I am at fault. Can we please be truthful? Please, please, please. Instead of being afraid and not saying anything, can we please start opening our mouths in truth? Pharaoh was angry with his officials and put me in prison in the prison of the house of the captain of the guard, me and the chief baker. One night both I and he had dreams, and each man's dream had its own meaning. And there was with us a young man, a Hebrew. 
How did he know he was a Hebrew? Oh, because he had crossed over. He was a Hebrew. Okay. A servant of the captain of the guard. And we told him our dreams and he interpreted them for us. He interpreted each man's dream individually. And it came about as he interpreted to us, I was restored to my office and he was hanged. Ooh. Then Pharaoh summoned Joseph and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself, changed his clothes and came into Pharaoh. Okay, Egyptians were, clean. were hairless. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. they just had this thing and they were just hairless. They even, and so much so they wore a wig Mm -hmm. You know, a fake hairpiece and, and make, but they had, they, they just wanted smooth skin. Okay. And so Pharaoh said, and so they cleaned him all up, right? Dressed him like an Egyptian. Basically, that's what I want you to understand. Okay. Is he doesn't look like a Hebrew. <coughs> Hebrews have hair. Right. Hebrews have Hair. Beards, beards, mm -hmm. and long hair, and okay, they're 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 sheep herders. They're mm -hmm. you know, rugged men, and Pharaoh is not. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, "I had a dream, and there is no one here who can interpret it. But I've heard it said about you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it." Oh, God bless Joseph. Here's his one chance to get out, and what does he do? Mm -hmm. It isn't in me. No, I can't interpret dreams. What? Joseph, what's wrong with you? Oh, please, can we tell the truth? Please, can we be bold enough to acknowledge our God? Mm -hmm. Please. He said, it isn't in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer that will set his mind at peace. How did he know that God was going to give him an answer that was going to set his mind at peace? Because he knows God. Yeah. Yeah. And don't you think your words aren't inspired? Sometimes they fly out of my mouth and I went, oh, and, I, 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 and I've heard myself say, did I just say that? Mm -hmm. Well, it came out of my mouth, but I think it was inspired by God. Not always. Okay, I speak in my flesh a lot, but there are times it comes out of my mouth and I'm like, wow, that was a good thought. Mm -hmm. It isn't in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer that will set his mind at peace. So Pharaoh said to Yosef, In my dream I stood at the edge of the river, and there came up out of the river seven cows, fat and sleek, and they began feeding in the swamp grass. And after them there came up out of the river seven more cows, poor, miserable looking, and lean. And I've never seen such bad looking cows in all of the land of Egypt. He's boasting about Egypt, right? Then the lean and miserable looking cows ate up the first seven fat cows. But after they had eaten them, one couldn't tell that they had eaten them because they were still as miserable looking as before. And at this point, I woke up. But I dreamed again, and I saw seven full ripe ears of grain growing out of a single stalk. And after them, seven ears, thin and blasted by the east wind, sprang up. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven ripe ears. And I told this to the magicians, but none of them could explain it to me. And then Yosef said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are the same. God has told Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears of grain are seven years. The dreams are the same. Likewise, the seven lean and miserable looking cows that came up after the seven are also seven years, and also the seven empty ears blasted by the east wind. There will be seven years a famine. This is what I told Pharaoh. So now it's Joseph's accounting, right? God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Here it is. There will be seven years of abundance throughout the whole land of Egypt, but afterwards there will come seven years of famine, and Egypt will forget all the abundance. Have We do that. With the water. That's but we do that. Right now. <laughs> but we do that a lot. Oh, God, why don't you answer me? What did I do for you last week? Oh, that? Oh, well, yeah, but, but this is this week. Mm -hmm. Come on. Tell me it isn't so. <sighs> I want more fat cows. I want more fat cows. <laughs> I want more fat cows. <clears throat> 
So this is what I told Pharaoh. Oh, I did that part. I'm sorry. The famine will consume the land and the abundance will not be known in the land because the famine that will follow, because it will be truly terrible. 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 Horrible. Mm -hmm. Why was the dream double for Pharaoh? Because the matter has been fixed by God. Okay, so if you dream once, that's mm -hmm. something. If you dream twice, it's set. No. Yeah. It's set. Okay. Mm -hmm. And God will shortly cause it to happen. Therefore, Pharaoh should look for a man, both discreet and wise, to put in charge of the land of Egypt. Pharaoh should do this, and he should appoint. Do you hear the boldness mm -hmm. in this? <laughs> I just came out of the dungeon. Yep. Huh. Mm -hmm. This boy who had been thrown down a pit in a well. Yeah. But he was always bold. Yeah. Yeah. He was. Mm -hmm. Oh, now where am I? Okay. Therefore, Pharaoh should look for a man both discreet and wise to put in charge of the land of Egypt. Verse 34. Pharaoh should do this, and he should appoint supervisors over the land to receive a 20% tax. Whoo! Glad I don't live in Egypt. Oh, wait, you do. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry about that. If that okay. was all we had to pay. That's that all we had to pay. <laughs> to receive a 20% tax on the produce of the land of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should gather all the food produced during these good years coming up and set aside grain under the supervision of Pharaoh to be used for food in the cities, and they should store it. This will be the land's food supply for the seven years of famine that will come over the land of Egypt so that the land will not perish as a result of the famine. Now, I just simply have to say, if all you're doing is giving 20% of a year, 20% of a year, mm -hmm. and that's going to last for the seven years of famine, not only for Egypt, but for all those who mm -hmm. come and buy, what are we doing with the 80%? What, what are we doing? Living on it? Maybe abundance? Are we wasteful? I mean, okay. 80%. Okay, 80%. <clears throat> All right. The proposal, verse 37. The proposal seemed good both to Pharaoh and to all his officials. And Pharaoh said to his officials, Can we find anyone else like him? The Spirit of God lives in him. And that's actually what it says. It actually says Spirit, Ruach. Mm -hmm. Okay? The Ruach of Elohim, Spirit of God. Okay? That's exactly what it says. So Pharaoh, this Pharaoh, knows God, mm -hmm. of God. Yeah, I, I, I'm not knows. saying knows as in right. serves him, but he knows of the Spirit of God. Okay. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. Well, really what he's saying is there's no one as discerning and wise as God who's speaking through you, right? But we look to flesh. We always look to flesh. You will be in charge of my household. All of my people will be ruled by what you say. Only when I rule from my throne will I be greater than you. Here's this Hebrew, who's abominable, by the way, to Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Fresh out of the dungeon. Fresh out of the dungeon. Fresh out of the pit. And he's going to be number two in charge. Only oh. God. Only God. Four hours. <laughs> Only God. Okay? Mm -hmm. So Pharaoh said to Yosef, here I'm going to place you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. I mean... He just went from nothing to everything. And Pharaoh, just based on the dream and the interpretation, puts him in charge of everything. Amazing. Pharaoh took his signet ring. Now, I've got a picture. And no, this is not the signet ring, okay? But there's two, two, two rings here that are Egyptian signet rings. Do you see? Because the signet ring was your signature. Mm -hmm. It was the mark 
Okay, so like the mark. Okay, it's a mark. It's a signature. It's a signet ring. Mm -hmm. You would seal something in wax. You would put the seal on it. Oh, that's that's fair because you would read that. That that's actually a language. Okay, so it's a it, it says something. I have no idea because I don't, don't speak, speak I don't speak Egyptian, so you know. Um, but it would be a mark, and it was known. Okay, it was known. All right, and each pharaoh had their own, mm -hmm. just like my own signature. Nobody could copy my signature. Good luck with that. Nobody wants to. Yeah, no, no, nobody could work my signature. It just wouldn't work, okay? <laughs> so Pharaoh took off his signet ring, off of his hand, and he put it onto Joseph's, Joseph's hand, and had him clothed in fine linen. Wow. Mm -hmm. We just went from the pit to fine Egyptian linen. Okay, come on now. Mm -hmm. Egyptian linen's pretty good. Highly desired. Highly desired. Mm -hmm. With a gold chain around his neck. Mm -hmm. And he had him ride in his second best chariot. Because the first best is for Pharaoh. Yeah. Yes. And they cried before him, bow down! Mm -hmm. Does this remind you of something? Mm -hmm. The dream? Mm -hmm. Bow down. Mm -hmm. Thus he placed him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said to Yosef, I, Pharaoh, decree that without your approval, no one is to raise his hand or his foot in all the land of Egypt. That's power. Pharaoh called Yosef by the name Zafnat Paneach, which means treasury of the glorious. It also um, um, revealer of secrets. And another meaning was Salvation of the age. Hmm. Hmm. And is Joseph those things? Yeah. Is he a picture of Yeshua? Yeah. Yes. Is he the treasure of the glorious? Actually, I left off a word. Treasurer, treasury of the glorious rest. Rest peace, right? He's going to cause that for Israel, right? Mm -hmm. And he is the revealer of secrets. Isn't that who Yeshua is? Yep. And he's the salvation of the age. Isn't that who Yeshua becomes? Yeah. Okay. And he gave him as his wife, Osnat, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of Om. So, I mean, he didn't just give him a commoner. Because the priests in Egypt were very, very important. Okay? And then Yosef went out through all the land of Egypt. Yosef was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. When do we think that he went into captivity? When he was 12, 17? Mm -hmm. About 17? Because that's, you know, it says when Joseph was 17, and then it backed up and told us things that had happened before, but, mm -hmm. okay? So, what's that, 13 years? Mm -hmm. And then he left Pharaoh's presence and traveled through all the land of Egypt. Why? Because he's implementing. What is he doing? He's building granaries. Mm -hmm. He's building cities that are going to have Grain and, and produce, Appointing right? Managers. <laughs> Appointing managers, right? Mm -hmm. He's got to have good discernment, too. He's got to know who's trustworthy and who's not. <clears throat> During the seven years of abundance, the earth brought forth heaps of produce. He collected all the food of these seven years in the land of Egypt and stored them in the cities. The food grown in the fields outside each city he stored in that city. Yosef stored grain in quantities like the sand on the seashore, so much that they stopped counting because it was beyond measure. 20%. Mm -hmm. wow. And 20% took care of a whole year. Plus, two sons were born to Yosef before the year of famine years. came. For seven years. It took care of seven years, the 20%. Took care of, tw but the 20% per year took care of a year, just 20%, right? Because there's seven years of, of they took, So they took 20% for seven years. Right. Mm -hmm. And then that 20% was enough for the But 20% of one year covered one year. And 20% of one year covered, one, right? Seven years of 20%. So only 20% of one year covered each year. It was enough. Right. Yeah. Okay? That was a, and not just for Egypt. Yeah, for other surrounding countries that there are that came. There mm -hmm. are places in Israel where there are markers of Pharaoh. Hmm. Wow. 
from pre-Yeshua, from pre, and it's like, what, does that not make sense? Because we will we, if we keep, when we keep reading, even Canaan, mm -hmm. the, the the famine was heavy there too. Mm -hmm. It was heavy everywhere. <clears throat> Egypt okay. was very fertile. Yep. Those years. <laughs> so during the seven years of abundance, the earth brought forth heaps of produce, and he collected all of these and he stored it in those cities. Then Yosef stored grain in quantities like the sand on the seashore. Verse 50, two sons were born to Yosef before the year of famine came. Asnath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On, bore to them. This is not a priest of God. <laughs> this is an Egyptian priest. Yosef called the firstborn Manasseh, meaning causing to forget. God is causing me to forget all of my troubles mm -hmm. that I suffered from my brothers, the hands of my family, right? The second one he called Ephraim, fruitful. Okay, for God has made me fruitful in the land of my misfortune. Hmm. The land of my misfortune. The seven years of abundance in the land of Egypt ended, and the seven years of famine began to come, just as Yosef had said. And there was famine in all the lands, but throughout the land of Egypt there was food. When the whole land of Egypt started feeling the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food, and Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. Why are you coming to me? Go see Yosef. Mm -hmm. Only he would have called him Zaphanat Panaach, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go see him. Go see that dude. And do what he tells you to do. Why are you troubling me? The famine was over all the earth. But then Yosef opened all the storehouses and sold food to the Egyptians since the famine was severe in the land of Egypt, moreover, all the countries came to Egypt to Yosef to buy grain because the famine was severe throughout all the earth. Let me see. Do I want to start this part? Mm. I think I'm... I think I'm going to start it and we'll see where we go. Oh. Chapter 42. Now Yaakov. Oh, remember Yaakov? Now Yaakov saw that there was grain in Egypt. So Yaakov said to his sons, Why are you staring at each other? Look, I've heard that there's grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some food for us from there so that we can stay alive and not die. Did they have food? Yeah, they had food. We're going to find out here really soon that they had food. They had olives. They had almonds. Mm -hmm. They weren't going to starve, but they didn't have grain. grain. Okay? Thus, Yosef's ten brothers went down. Ten brothers. I thought there were eleven. Benjamin's around. Hmm. Daddy must be holding him close. Mm -hmm. Thus, Yosef's ten brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt, except for Benjamin, Yosef's brother. Oh, Yaakov did not send him with his brothers because he was afraid something might happen to him. What does ja what does Yaakov Jacob believe about Yosef? That a wild animal got him. A wild animal tore him apart. Mm -hmm. And it's been thirteen years, and these ten sons have allowed the father to believe that. Hmm. Verse 5, the sons of Israel came to buy along with the others that came since the famine extended into the land of Canaan, right? It's not Israel yet. Yosef was the governor over the land. It was he who sold to all the people of the land. Now when Yosef's brothers came and prostrated themselves before him on the ground, why? Because I need something from you and you're the ruler and I'm going to, I'm going to bow down and show reverence to you. Hmm. Do we remember a dream? Mm -hmm. And you bowed down. I had a dream and my sheaves and your sheaves came and they all bowed down to me. Hmm. <laughs> Yosef saw his brothers and recognized them. Sure, he would recognize them. Have they changed? Not, not not so much because they were all, they were older than him anyway so they were already adults so as adults you don't change a whole lot you might change a little bit 
but he recognizes their speech. Let me tell you something. I cannot have heard a voice for a very long time. I'm going to recognize that voice. Okay? I can remember coming home from Europe, and my father, who you all know, loved me immensely, knew me very well, walked right past me. I said, Dad. And he heard my voice and turned around and stared at me and stared at my eyes. Mm -hmm. And then he recognized me. And you go, why? Did you really change in just a few months? Yeah. Yeah. I was always very pale, very white. But when I came home from Europe and spending time on the Mediterranean, I was really dark. Really dark. And my hair was longer. And obviously, it had been a little bit, but he heard my voice and stopped dead in his tracks, turned around and made eye contact. And, ah, that's my daughter. Okay? So, you know, why didn't they recognize Joseph? Well, Joseph was 17. Joseph was young. Now Joseph has no hair. And he's not speaking Hebrew. How do I know? Let's keep reading. So... He recognized them, but he acted toward them as if he were a stranger and spoke harshly with them. Hmm. I wonder why. He asked them, do you think it was out of hatred? Do you think it was out of animosity? Do you think it was out of vengeance? I don't. I don't believe that for a second. Where are you from? And they answered, we're from the land of Canaan to buy food. So Yosef recognized his brothers, but they didn't recognize him. Remembering the dreams he had about them, Yosef said to them, You're all spies. You've come to spot our country's weaknesses. No, my lord, they replied. Your servants have come to buy food. We're all the sons of one man. We're upright men. You think maybe that might have went, <laughs> Your servants aren't spies. Well, that part's true. No, he says. You've come to spy out our country's weaknesses. Why do you think Joseph is doing this? Testing. This is a test. It's a test. We're upright men. Are you? I don't think there's any vengeance. I don't think there's any cruelty. I don't think there's any hatred. I don't think there's any animosity. I don't. Because I think it at this exact character. No, it's not in his character. It's not in his character at all. And I think that as soon as he remembered his dreams, mm -hmm. this is why you sent me here. So I can save my family. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's the heart and how you look at things. Now, the brothers might be going later on when they realize, right? And we were gonna find that out. Okay? But again, please don't project onto me what you think. I know. Don't I project on to me. Janet would have made him suffer some. Yeah. <laughs> yes, she would have. Oh, she would have. Yeah, Sit now, repent have. later. Oh, no. That Thank good you. Irish guilt. That's right. Sit now, repent later. Well, let me just dig mm -hmm. it into you a little bit. I won't really hang you, but I'm going to let yeah. you suffer for a little while. Mm -hmm. You can hurt. You can mm -hmm. hurt. <laughs> so she's just... small, but she's mean. <laughs> <laughs> could, could, could be. <laughs> I don't know her as mean. So, what I'm saying is be true to yourself. And just because someone accuses you of something, I'm sorry that's how you would behave. I'm sorry that's how you would react. That's not how I react. That's not how I think. That's not how I behave. That didn't come out of me. That came out of you. Okay? All right. Thank God Joseph has character. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I line up here. Mm -hmm. And and please, it's not like a bee in my bonnet, okay? This 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 comes by abiding. This comes by learning. This comes by failures. Mm -hmm. This comes by doing it wrong mm -hmm. and learning to do it right. This comes by abiding and letting his spirit lead you, okay? All right. You too can get there like Joseph. <laughs> you too can be like Joseph and not be mean, Okay? You too can be like Joseph and recognize, oh, all of this happened. This is God. Okay? You too can be like Joseph, like Yeshua. Oh. Mm -hmm. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Mm -hmm. We 
for your servants twelve brothers and the son of one man. Just as I said, your spies, here's how you can prove you're not lying. As Pharaoh lives, you will not leave here unless your youngest brother comes here. I want to test you. Verse 16, send one of you. In other words, I'm going to keep nine of you and one of you can go home. Send one of you and let him bring your brother. Meanwhile, you will be kept in custody. You will prove whether there's any truth in what you say. It's a test. Are you men of integrity? Because you weren't the last time I saw you. <clears throat> you were actually cruel and mean and hateful and unloving. And you didn't respect your father. You didn't respect your father either. Because you took something that your father loved. And you didn't care what, your, what was going to happen to your father or of me. Otherwise, as Pharaoh lives, you are certainly spies. And then he put all of them together in prison for, guess how many days? Three. Three. Hmm. Hmm. And on the third day. Hmm. You know, there's something about maybe by the third day we finally get to the end of ourselves if we're not really terribly stubborn. Some of us might take a little longer than three days. <laughs> but hopefully by the end of three days we've done some self-reflection and we're ready to prostrate and say, Abba, he named me. Here I am. What would you, right? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the ch -ch 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 going on with these 10 for three days? What's he going to do with them? Mm. On the third day, Yosef said to them, do what I say and stay alive for I fear God. He's telling the truth. Mm -hmm. I fear God. If you are upright men, let one of your brothers remain incarcerated in the prison that you're being kept in while you go and carry grain back to relieve the famine in your homes. This is also his heart. He's not going to let his family suffer. Mm -hmm. But bring your youngest brother to me, and in this way your statements will be verified and you won't die. So they did it. They said to each other, now, they have no idea he can hear them. He ha they have no idea he understands them. But listen to what they say. We are in, he's not, they're not saying this to him. They're saying it to each other. We are in fact guilty concerning our brother. Joseph's got ears. I got ears like Joseph. I heard that, mm -hmm. right? He was in distress and he pleaded with us. Okay, so they recognize it. So you see what he's, he's listening. Mm -hmm. This is a test. He pleaded with us. We saw it, but we wouldn't listen. We were callous. We were cruel. We were horrid. Mm -hmm. We were cruel to our brother. We're guilty. We did wrong. That's why this distress has come upon us now. See, after 13 years, they maybe have never even discussed it again. But all of a sudden, boom. Mm -hmm. Reuben answered. Ah. Joseph's going to get a little insight here. Reuben answered, didn't I tell you don't wrong the boy? Okay, now there's something, an insight. You need to understand that the ten brothers still see him as a boy. Mm -hmm. That's fresh in their minds. He's crying, he's pleading, he's hurting. There's this vulnerable 17-year-old, and you callous men didn't give a rip. Didn't I tell you, don't harm the boy? He's still a boy in their eyes. Because they hurt and wounded a boy. But you wouldn't hear of it. Now comes the reckoning for his blood. They had no idea that Yosef understood them since an interpreter was translating for them. Yosef turned away from them and wept. And when he returned, well, wouldn't you too? Because he's, he's hearing some heart. He's hearing some truth. He's hearing some remorse, mm -hmm. right? He's hearing guilt. Then he returned and he spoke to them. And he took Shimon from among them and put him in prison before their eyes. Why, 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 why Simeon? Why Shimon? Why? Who's firstborn? Reuben. Okay, but Reuben messed up. Reuben cut her. Reuben, Reuben messed up. But in this regard, Reuben has just shown that he was trying to protect the boy. Who's second born? Shimon, Shimon. Simeon. 
So who's next in line to be responsible? Shimon, mm -hmm. Simeon. Who's a hothead? Shimon. How do we know this? Because he and Levi, mm -hmm. in their anger, you did this to our sister. They didn't care about their sister. If they did, they would have let her got, get married mm -hmm. because now she's doomed to be single for all of her days. She can't be what she was trained to be. Mm -hmm. They're hotheads. Mm -hmm. So this is Simeon, okay? My opinion, my opinion, it doesn't say in here that he's a hothead, but you know, kind of, <laughs> or, well, yeah, wait till you get to 49 and 50 of Genesis. You'll see it. Even their dad calls him out, so. Mm. So next he ordered that their containers be filled with grain and that every money, man's money be put back in his pack and that they be given provisions for the journey. So not only the grain they bought, put their money in the pack, and then give them provisions for the journey. Why? So that they don't necessarily have to open their packs. They have provisions for the journey, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. When these things had been done for them, they loaded their grain on their donkeys, and off they went, right? Happy to get out of Dodge, man. But at camp that night, as one of them opened his pack to give fodder to his donkey, he noticed his money. There it was just inside his pack. And he said to his brothers, my money has been restored. It's right there inside my pack. At that, their hearts sank. Do you think that the rest of them didn't look? It doesn't say so here. It does later. It, it tells us, gives us insight later. But you don't think the rest of them went to look? Yeah, I think maybe they <laughs> went to go look. At that, their hearts sank. They turned trembling to one another and they said, what is this that God has done to us? What do we say about consequences? Remember when we were talking in Acts? Mm -hmm. God clears them, right? The blood of Yeshua clears us, but there are still consequences. <laughs> they returned to Jacob, their father, in the land of Canaan, and they told him all that had happened to them. The man, the Lord of the land, spoke harshly with us, and he took us for spies in his country. And we said to him, we're upright men. We're not spies. We are 12 brothers, sons of our father. One is gone. One is gone. <coughs> they didn't say dead. Jacob does. Israel says, my son is dead. But the brothers don't. One is gone. And the youngest stayed with our father in the land of Canaan. But the man, the Lord of the land, said to us, Here is how I know that you are upright men. Leave one of your brothers with me. Take grain to relieve the famine in your homes and go on your way. But you bring your youngest brother to me. By this I will know that you aren't spies, but are upright men. It's a test. Then I will return your brother to you, and you will do business in the land. So don't come back before me if you don't do this, right? Next, as they emptied their packs, there was each man's mag, bag of money in his pack. And when they and their father saw their bags of money, they became afraid. Yaakov, their father, said to them, I wonder who he's talking to. I can't tell you. You have robbed me of my children. Yosef is gone. Shimeon is gone. Smon. And now you're taking Binyamin away. It all falls on me. Can you hear his anguish? Mm-hmm. Nothing worse than losing a child. Except for maybe they're alive, but you still can't get to them. That's pretty rough. Reuben said to his father, If I don't bring him back to you, you can kill my own two sons. I have news for you. Reuben has four sons, not two. <laughs> Why two? And which two? Hmm. Why two? Mm. Well... It's not Simeon. Joseph's Benjamin gone. And Benjamin. Joseph. Son for son. Son for son. He had four sons. He could have said three to Simeon. But he knows his father. Mm -hmm. Joseph. Benjamin. One for one. Son for son. And Reuben's not even the one that's guilty. Mm-hmm. Whose idea was it, by the way? It wasn't Simeon's. It was Judas. Mm -hmm. Reuben said, if I don't bring him back to him, you can kill my own two sons. Wow. Put him in my care. Now, would Jacob do something like that? No. He wouldn't. Put him in my care, and I will return him to you. But he replied, Jacob. Right? Israel. 
my son, my son, singular one, numero uno. He might have been 12th born, but right now he's the first. He's the only. My son will not go down with you. His brother is dead and he alone is left. No mention of Shimon, Simeon. His brother is dead. He's the only one left. Hmm. There's Rachel again, huh? Mm -hmm. There's love again. There's my... Mm. <clears throat> Don't show favorites. His brother is dead and he alone is left. If anything were to happen to him while traveling with you, you would bring my hair down to shoal with grief. But the famine was severe in the land. That's the first verse of chapter 43, and that's where I'm going to stop. Um, they didn't go back right away. Because Simeon's not as important as Benjamin. And he's already lost one. Mm -hmm. Okay? Does it mean he doesn't love Simeon? No, I don't, I, I don't think it says that at all. But there's something that was special to him about Yosef. Remember, Yosef was very much like him. They both had dreams. They both heard, and God spoke to them through dreams, right? So, and then Benjamin is the last one of his beloved Rachel. Okay? So there's a lot in here, um, but I'll probably pull it out next time because it... It, it goes with next time. So I know basically I just kind of read it today and didn't really do a lot of talking on it, but it's a build up for the next one because when we get into the next 43, 44, 45, 46, it starts making a lot of sense, okay? And all of that background, then, oh, okay, that makes sense, all right?